A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video, but more on that later. We're leaving our chickens completely unattended. No food refills, no water refills, no daily chores. Not for a day, but for three full weeks. This isn't some random useless test. The goal is actually really simple. Build an automatic chicken coop that's so beautifully efficient that no matter what happens, our hens will be healthy and happy for weeks at a time with no human assistance. Because life gets busy. Babies, travel, work, coyotes, construction. And when that happens, the birds still need food. They still need clean water. They still need safety. A good chicken coop provides the basics of food and shelter, but a great chicken coop is resilient. This means fully automatic feeding systems that are predator-proof. Unlimited, fresh, clean water. No more daily chores. No more weekly chores. 30 minutes of maintenance performed on one day per month. That is my dream scenario. And since we're fully off-grid in the Catskill Mountains of upstate New York, I need all of these systems to work without access to grid electric or water hookups. It's got to be a rugged and portable system. We don't have the luxury of a hose with unlimited water or an extension cord with unlimited electricity. So I feel like the million dollar question is, can you leave your chickens alone without any care for weeks at a time and have them all survive? We're about to find out. <laughs> this is test one of one. Goodbye, my little chickens. Be good. Enjoy. We have about 35 chickens and they eat a considerable amount of food. So in order for the system to run well for weeks at a time, I made sure to begin testing different designs months before the all important trip to New York. Oh man. Our old chicken coop interior was beautiful, but clearly built by a guy who'd never raised chickens before. The roosting area was way too big and took up most of the coop. Most of the nesting boxes were unappealing to the hens and the food and water systems were an almost daily chore. Yeah, it's just incredibly inefficient and I love redesigning spaces once I know how they actually work. I feel like I got a lot of ideas from the internet when I first built this and like so many things on the internet, they just weren't right. The major change I wanna make is redoing the way the nesting boxes are organized because I built a grid of 12 originally, but the hens don't like the upper two floors. So we ended up with only four nesting boxes, which is kind of annoying. So step one of the coop redesign is to move the roost over and decrease the size by about 50%, which will make room for 12 equally desirable nesting boxes. My lovely ladies really like these red egg crate boxes, and I like them because they're indestructible, easy to clean, and quick to install. Not being wood is nice because you don't get mold sticking to them, and there's nowhere for bugs to live. There you go, ladies. Sorry about that. So this right here is a problem, because they're going to stand on top and then poop on each other and make the eggs even nastier. This little one showed me that we are going to need the top. So I made a design mistake and I installed these boxes too high because they're nesting under there and my eggs over there over there and also this corner has become a nesting area but this is the real problem spot right here 
I want a little bit of an air gap under the boxes so I can insulate the floor with straw to help this area stay a little warmer in the dead of winter. When it gets really cold on our mountain, the eggs will freeze and crack within a couple hours unless a hen is sitting on them. So my goal is to make these nesting boxes extra cozy. There we go, everybody's happy now. The key to my new fully automatic chicken coop redesign is a custom built food, grit, and oyster dispensing box that's housed inside the coop so it stays out of the elements and out of reach of predators. I want this box to be massive. This way, when I go to the store to buy bags of feed, I can dump those bags directly into the box and eliminate an entire unnecessary step of unloading the bags especially since mice like to open them up. Whereas in the coop, the chickens fiercely protect their food and eat the mice, so less food gets wasted and we don't end up feeding a village of mice. So this is my new system. How nice is that? Auto feed. see but the entire floor is chicken food. I think they just scratch it out of there and spread it. Look at how much feed is being wasted. Oh guys. It took me two weeks of tinkering to get this box working perfectly. This meant rebuilding the little tray three times so that it catches the food but doesn't allow any to spill. But now that it's running smoothly, I have an automatic feed box that can store 600 pounds of food. Look at that. pours out those holes. Cool. And then that's eight bags full of food in there. And then they have unlimited oyster and grit. Wow. I'm guessing we can store multiple years worth of grit and oysters since those aren't perishables. All of which means I can restock this baby in 20 minutes or less, not even once a month. Next up, we tackle the off-grid water problem. But I can bag it. That looks like trash. Since we don't have on-demand water, the next best thing is to fill up an IBC water tote with water from our well by running the generator for a couple hours. That gives us 275 gallons of water, which gets connected with a garden hose to a smaller tank with a float valve in it, and little drinking cups for the chickens. So as they drink, the large tank refills the smaller tank using nothing but a float valve and gravity. So when this float valve gets raised up, it should stop the water from flowing and then we'll test for leaks. And if this works, the chickens have like a three month supply of water without me ever having to do anything else. The green box with the lid keeps the tank clean so they can't poop into their water supply, which is the main issue when it comes to chickens and water. Couple that water system with the feed box that can store 600 pounds of food and add in an automatic coop door that opens with the sunrise and closes after sunset. And the final product is a fully automatic chicken coop that can easily and reliably provide food, water, and safety to a group of 35 hens without any human assistance for months at a time. I don't really remember when I started this video, but it's definitely been a couple of weeks. I snuck into the coop a couple times just to grab some eggs and do some time lapses to see how they were using the feeding system and everything seems to be going incredibly well. The whole point of building this system was so that I wouldn't have to go in there and feed them all of the time. And now I don't, I haven't done anything food or water related with this coop in over a month, I think. I'll have to check the footage to see the actual dates. But yeah, let's go take a look inside. <laughs> oh, looks like everybody's alive. So that's good. And I don't see any baby chicks, which is nice. And look, they still have food. So everything is working. They are, looks like they're laying some eggs in some unideal places, but 
Well, also, we got a ton of eggs. Holy moly, do we have a lot of eggs in here. Do you guys want to know how many eggs we got? Oh my gosh. 80? 120. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then they also started laying some eggs over here and over there, which is not ideal. But obviously, I think if you came in here once or twice a week and clean these out, you would be in good shape. So I think that's my plan. I feel like two days of collecting eggs a week is acceptable, possible, and would be good to have done because you get cleaner eggs. Look how happy these guys are though. They're eating their feed. I threw a bunch outside on the ground. And yeah, honestly, the entire system is working so, so well. It's gonna allow us to continue to have chickens while I shift my focus to building our house and running our YouTube channel, setting up our business a little bit better, just doing a lot of other tasks unrelated to being a chicken farmer, <laughs> which was never my goal, but I do love having chickens. Max loves them, and Dana in particular really loves the eggs. So I feel like one day Max can take on some of these chores, but for now, I think it's nice to have systems that support themselves and also don't take too much of my time. So if you are a dad, you've got young kids, set up a coop that can fend for itself and you won't be bringing your chickens food and water every single day, which is exhausting. A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. I recently built a free download page for a shepherd's pie recipe from our cookbook batch. As someone who builds a lot of custom stuff, I can really appreciate a good, easy to use kit. Squarespace has always been known for their awesome templates, but what I like most about them is really how quick they are to customize a little. So you can build pages really, really fast, but also keep that clean, modern look. I can grab a classic image gallery and then adjust the spacing a little, go back and forth with a couple design ideas, and ultimately end up on a page that's simple and easy to use in a matter of minutes. For something like a quick little download link, it's important to be able to build that myself instantly and keep the projects moving. And when you want something more in depth, they've got all the tools you need to build massive layouts as well. If you're ready to create something of your own, head to squarespace.com slash wildweroam for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code wildweroam for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain.